Okay, so our next segment of this video is about agents, so oxidizing agents and reducing agents. And so first, they also have synonyms. Oxidizing agent is sometimes called an oxidant. And what it does is it causes something else to be oxidized. So the material that is causing oxidation must be the substance being reduced, all right? So that means it's gaining electrons. On the flip side, reducing agents or reductants are the ones that are being oxidized. So if you're causing something else to be reduced, you have to give up those electrons in order for that to happen. So these feel like opposite statements, but just remember that if you go to a travel agent, they are not traveling. They are causing you to do the traveling, okay? So oxidizing agents cause oxidation, reducing agents cause reduction, okay? So here's an example of how we can apply these language, um, this vocab essentially, right? So first off, we have to know what oxidation numbers apply to each one of these substances in the reaction. Then we can figure out which is reduced and which is oxidized. And then we can apply the, the terms oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So calcium, my first question is always, is it an element? And that is a big yes there. So it has a value of zero for the oxidation state. Um, let's see. Oh, I have another element over here. So I'm going to just put that as zero as well. And then I look at my remaining two compounds. And so of course they are not ionic. Well, okay. Water is not ionic. So I look at my special rules and I remember that hydrogen is always plus one when it's attached to nonmetals and oxygen is always minus two unless it's peroxide. So that one's done. Over here, I think calcium hydroxide is ionic. And if it was dissolved in water, it would make Ca2 plus and two hydroxide. So we saw that when we, when we looked at the lime water in the uh, titration experiment. And so if that's ionic, then I can ask the question, um, are any of them monatomic ions? And of course, calcium is. So calcium will be a two plus. And I kind of skipped over it, but I got to that because I know hydroxide is a minus one. And I have two of those. And I also know that if I look on the periodic table, calcium is either a, a charge of zero or plus two. Those are the only options for calcium. So it's pretty straightforward. That just leaves us with the oxygen and the hydrogen from the hydroxide. And so the rules there still apply from every other covalent compound. Oxygen is minus two hydrogen is plus one. And that's actually how you get an overall negative one charge, right? So if it's minus two plus one, it equals negative one. Okay. So that that's everybody. Everybody's got a oxidation state. So the next step is to ask what changes. So I notice the calcium goes from zero to plus two. Well, okay. So calcium zero to plus two. So in order for something to go from zero to plus two, it has to give up two negative charges. So we're producing two electrons there by doing that. So if we're, we're producing two electrons, that's losing electrons, which is oxidation. Okay. So the calcium is oxidized. And then I look on here and I'm looking for what else changes. Oh, and I see hydrogen goes from plus one to zero. So it looks like this, H plus. This is actually an H2. So if you were gonna really balance the equation, it would look like that. In order for that to be true, each hydrogen has to gain one electron. So plus one plus negative one is how we get to zero. All right, so if we had just one electron, it would be H plus plus one electron gets us to H zero. It doesn't actually exist as just a single hydrogen all by itself. So we kind of probably do want to fix that by just doubling all of it. So two hydrogen ions plus two electrons gets us H two gas. 
All right, so now we know what has gained electrons. So therefore we know what was reduced. So the last step is to apply the terminology oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So here we would say that the solid calcium, which was oxidized, is the reducing agent because it caused the hydrogen to be reduced. Um, and then we would say the agent is H2O, but it's really just the hydrogen plus one inside of there. But so water is the oxidizing agent. Okay, here's something important to notice. The agents are always reactants and it's always the entire compound if it's in a compound. So we're not just saying H plus, even though that's all that changes the oxidation state. We're saying that water is what causes oxidizing to happen. Okay, so we gotta be careful with these terms. Okay, so we already went through this, but um, when it comes to balancing reactions, we need to, to balancing redox reactions specifically, we need to be very careful uh, that the electrons cancel out, okay? So the first proposed um, H plus reduction that I wrote had only one H plus in it, which would mean you'd produce half of an H2 element. It's kind of weird. Um, some books teach it that way with half reactions. I personally feel more comfortable um, multiplying the whole thing by two. And if we do that, check it out. If we do that in this case anyway, you would, you would get two water plus two electrons, and it forms two hydroxide. Remember, O is not gonna go off by itself. Only one of these H's is H plus, so keep that in mind. And we're gonna produce one hydrogen. So now I have two electrons being produced by the calcium and two electrons being used by the water, so that is balanced, okay? Um, then, we just have to take these two reactions and add them together. So, so these, this reaction here and this reaction here. So we're gonna say calcium solid plus two H2Os plus two electrons. So everything that's a reactant, when we add together, everything that's a reactant gets put on one side and then we draw our arrow. And everything that's a product is gonna be put onto the right side. So we get calcium two plus, two electrons, two OH minus, and one hydrogen. Then we look for things that cross off. So two electrons are the same on both sides, and that's it. So our total reaction in the end is just calcium plus water, oh, two waters, yields calcium ion, uh, two hydroxides, and an H2. So that's our overall balanced equation. Here's the process we just kind of went through really briefly, and I picked a really easy one. So the next example we do is not going to be as easy. So it's handy to kind of print this list out and have it with you. Um, one of the things that's different from what we did in chapter four when we first learned to balance reactions is if oxygen and hydrogen are not balanced, we ignore them because we're just gonna add as much water or as much hydrogen ion as we need to have. So it's really only the other atoms in the, in the reaction that we're gonna worry about. So for example, in this one, calcium's already balanced. Everything else we ignore until we get to the very, very end of the, of the process.